So what I want to talk to you about tonight is commitment to community. And we have message notes on your um, Bayside Church app. If you would like to follow along in those notes, you can do that by simply going to the app or on the website. So commitment to community is really what I want to share with you tonight. And I'm going to look at what that actually is. Uh, what it actually means, the, the challenges that we have got in today's society. Um, I'm going to look at the benefits and I'm going to look at how we can foster it. But to start with, we're just going to get into a simple definition of what is community. And community is just simply a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. Now, there's all sorts of communities. Um, but I don't want to be standing up here alone telling you what they are. And so I'm going to get Hattie with a microphone. And I want you to run around, Hattie. And I want you to participate in this and tell me the different types of communities that exist. And maybe just to yell them out, um, who knows there's a type of community? Thank you, Gigi. Anyone else? Any other types of communities that we are aware of? What was that? Sporting. sporting community. We've got school. We've got school community. Anything else? Any other types of communities we're aware of? Music. Music community. Wow. Playing what? Violins or Matt's place. bands? Matt's Place. Matt's Place definitely is a community. Radio community. Radio? Yep. Okay. Yep. That's a community. Neighbourhood. Your neighbourhood. Your actual physical location. Fitness community. Is that your gym? Yes, that's, that's definitely somewhere, yep. Anything else? Any, work, yes, work is definitely a community because you work with people, you probably spend more time with the people that you work with than you do your actual family. So look, communities exist, they're out there. We know of many communities that we're probably flowing in and out of. So if we think about a Christian community, and Gigi mentioned that, we're talking about the local church. And whilst it's definitely about a location, we gather around a person, and that is Jesus Christ. That is the reason that we gather. It's because we are choosing to follow and become like Jesus Christ. And the beauty of this is as long as we are committed to journeying together as a community and Christ is actually in the centre, we should be changing, transforming and becoming whole. Would you agree with me? Yes. yes. So it takes commitment to Christ-like communities in order for this to happen. So commitment's another interesting word. And commitment simply means being dedicated to a cause, an activity, or a relationship. Now, there are two types of commitments. One is the ability to commit to ideals and values, but without this, we tend to become purposeless and directionless and unfocused. The other is the ability to commit to people. And without this, we remain alone. And we all know that that's not good. So if I'm going to give you an example here, if I say I'm going to commit to something, what we usually mean is we expect a certain level of behaviour to follow it, don't we? So I recently have gone back to study. I've uh, enrolled to do a master's and I decided to do that because I wanted to continue growing and learning so that I can give out to this community. Now, if I didn't show up to the lectures and I didn't do all the reading that was required, would you say I'm committed? Probably not. Let me give you another example. If a couple start to date and they've been seeing each other for a little while and then they have a conversation where they say, Let's go deeper. Let's commit to one another. And they agree to that. And the following week, one of them decides to go on a date with someone else. Mmm. <laughs> Sounds like online dating. No, sorry, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, you would question the level of commitment, would you not? Okay. So commitment, therefore, to community expects a certain level of... Um, dedication to our behaviour. And it's actually what enables us to grow in maturity. If you want to grow, you need commitment. Otherwise, it's very shallow. 
Commitment is actually what fosters intimacy with each other and with God. So if I choose to remain committed to Christ in this community, the Sandra Cavallo you're going to meet in five or ten years' time hopefully is a far better one than the one you're seeing here today. Why? Yes, it is possible. (laughs) Why, you think I'm perfect? No, far from perfect. Because I should be growing and changing and transforming and becoming more like Christ. And that only happens in community. So let me pray. Father God, I just thank you for this message that you have given. And Lord, right now, I thank you. Your word says that where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. So Holy Spirit, come, impress on our hearts Something for each one of us through this message. May the power and the strength of community be reiterated here tonight through this message. I thank you, Lord, that you will enable me to communicate this as clearly as possible. In Jesus' name, amen. So if community is actually really important, I'm actually curious of what the absence of community would look like. One of my passions when I share with you is often to look at cultural patterns in society. Because the word says that we are not to transform to the, sorry, we are not to uh, conform to the patterns of this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So I'm curious to know if the cultural patterns, the way life is, is flowing at the moment, does it actually hinder? or enable us to walk with Christ in a better way. So tonight I want to look at community and culture, and one of the biggest shifts that I see in the last 100 years, particularly in Australia and other Western countries like the US, UK, uh, the Netherlands, New Zealand, we have gone from a shift of being a collectivist culture to an individualistic culture. So what that actually means is that These individualistic cultures value the individual over the collective group. It elevates the importance of self and being independent instead of identifying with group mentality. It prizes personal goals over having group achievements. Whereas collectivist cultures actually prioritise the group over self. So I was curious about this. I thought to myself, okay... That how, you know, if we're shifting to, we're very much a self-focused um, or individualistic culture, how does this reflect in society? And so I had a look, as you do, at the Oxford Dictionary, and I was curious. I was wondering, wonder what type of words have been entered into the Oxford Dictionary? And lo and behold, I found out that 240 words were entered into the Oxford Dictionary in January 2018. Of the 240 new words that have entered into the dictionary, 40% of those words started with the word self. 40%. Yeah, I'm glad you were gobsmacked. I was pretty gobsmacked. Now, do you want to have a look at what some of those words actually are? Here are just a sample of 10 of the 97 words that were entered into the Oxford Dictionary. Self-combust, self-deprivation, Self-exile, self-guided, self-inflator, self-judge, self-medicating, self-obsession, self-sacrificing, self-willful. Wow. Okay. That's just a small smidgen. So then I was fascinated to know how many words start with com, as in community. Com meaning with. And guess what I found? Zero. Zero. Zero words have been entered into the dictionary starting with com, meaning with. So our culture clearly, clearly values going it alone, being independent, being self-sufficient, being that individual whose name's up in lights. But at what cost? At the cost of community. I love the cartoonist Lunig. You might know him. He, he does amazing cartoons, and you'll often find them in the age. He speaks a lot of truth through his cartoons in a sort of light-hearted and even serious way. But I stumbled across this one, and you might not be able to read it because it might be too far, but I'm going I'm to read it out to you from the left to the right. 
So the first little man says, a man with his opinions and concerns. We move to the centre image. It says, a woman with her memories, anxieties and secrets. And then the far right, a woman with her ambitions, causes, grievances and regrets. Then the bottom left, a man with his theories, reputations, style, lies, pains, charms, tricks, vendettas, powers and obsessions. And the far right, and this man, he's lost the plot. He's had enough and just wants to connect. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I love it. I love it. Just, he's lost the plot. He wants to connect. He wants to move from all his self-focus and connect with others. You know, Lunig is actually making light of an actually really serious issue in our society. You know, the more we go it alone, the more we're going to see mental health problems, such as depression and anxiety. That's part of the reason why here as a church community, we have placed it as one of our initiatives to start the conversation and continue the conversation, because it is a, an absolute issue in our society today. The more we focus on self, the more we're going to see this arise. And I believe we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. In 2017, at the 20, 125th Annual Convection of the American Psychological Association, Professor Julianne holt Lundstad said this, Social isolation could be a greater threat to public health than obesity. And I think she's right. We're not designed to go alone. You actually can't become whole or Christ-like on your own. It only happens in community. You know, when a baby is born into this world, it, it doesn't survive on its own. It needs food, shelter, security, love. It, as it grows, it becomes more independent, but it's always connected to others. An isolated individual doesn't grow. It's only as they choose to come under the shelter of a community like this one, where they are fed and loved, that they can actually thrive and go out and then come back in. Now, I, I want to share with you, um, I believe that, you know, as we, as we lose sight of community, we're going to lose sight of how being shaped by God and how he intended it to be. And one of the things that I see in my role as pastoral care coordinator and um, the communications manager here at Bayside Church is Livestream. Now, Livestream is an amazing service that we offer here to our community and to those beyond our four walls. It's a service that we provide for people who may be sick and just can't get out of the house. It's a service we provide for maybe people who've gone away but want to connect with what's happening here. Or for people who are in remote communities, maybe they don't have a church community. Livestream, in my mind, is never intended to be the full diet. And what do I mean by that? I mean you cannot experience the full benefit through Livestream because it cannot replace the face-to-face the touch, the words of encouragement that we give one another when we come into this place. I liken live stream to a protein shake. If I'm on the run and I'm busy and I just need to quickly eat something, I'll have a protein shake. It fills me. Does it satisfy me? Uh, yeah, it's okay. It gets me through. But it does not compare for me sitting down on a Sunday night with my family my parents, my sisters, my nieces and nephews, their partners, around a beautiful Italian meal that's been prepared. Yeah, you're hungry. <laughs> we do this every Sunday night where we share together, we talk about our week, we have lots of debates, and we partake of this beautiful meal. Nothing can replace that. No protein shake can replace that. So I want to speak lovingly to our live stream audience. If you happen to make this your main diet and you could be here, can I lovingly invite you to come along? Can I lovingly encourage you to be here next week? Because we miss you. Yeah. See, everyone misses them. So why be in community? What are the benefits of community? Well, I believe the law of first mention is something we should always pay attention to. And if you have your Bibles, I'd love for us to turn to Genesis. And we're going to turn to Genesis 1. 
And I'm going to go through these quite quickly. I'm not going to read every scripture. But there's something quite fascinating in this. In Genesis 1 to 3, it starts off with God creating. His, his very first words, let there be light. And God creates the day and night and he says, it's good. If we move to verse 6, it says, let there be an expanse between the waters, separating water from water. And from that we have the sky. And God created it and it was good. We move to verse 9. It says, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let dry ground appear. And then we have land and sea. And that was good. Then Genesis 11, it says, let the earth produce vegetation. And so we have all various types of plant form and seeds and fruit. And that was good. And then it goes to verse 14, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And then we have seasons. And that was good. Verse 20, let the water swarm with living creatures. And so we have all various types of creatures in the sea, and that was good. And then verse 24, let the earth produce living creatures, creatures according to their kinds, and that's talking about animals on the earth, and that was good. Now, this is a fascinating part. When it comes to making man, so far, all we have heard is let there be, let there be this. But when it comes to making man, this is what God says, let us... Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let us. Us is a collective word. It's only when God is choosing to make man the pinnacle of his creation in his own image that he says, Let, let us make man in this way. God's collective word for him is the Trinity. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he expresses to us in this very first verse that when he's making us, he's making us for community. That's his intended purpose. Because we reflect the image of God. We are designed for community. Our whole makeup is designed for this, for us. Us being together with God. Us being here. And the more we get to know each other, the more we see the reflection of God. Just want you to think about that. We all reflect a part of God. And as we get to know each other, we get to know God more. We need each other in community to become whole and holy. The benefit of community is, is that it's designed this way that without community, we actually languish. I want you to look around to the person to the left and your right. I want you to look at their eyes, and I want you to say to that person, I need you. <laughs> and then I want you to say to that person, Together we're spectacular. Because the benefits of community is far more powerful, far more beautiful than ever going on on your own. I think this was drummed into me so clearly on a missions trip to Africa several years ago. You discover things about people when you travel together. Do you, do you know that? And I found something about my pastor, Pastor Christy. Yes. So whilst we're on safari in South Africa, we've taken our forever home boys, I discovered about something about Pastor Christy, and that is her knowledge, her, 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 her way of just stuff coming out of her head. Anyway... Pastor Christie has an amazing memory for collective nouns. Yes. And on this trip, for those who are on this trip would remember, she would pipe up with a different collective noun for everything. Pastor Christie, I want to invite you up here. 
And can I have the microphone, Hattie? I'm going to fire them at you. Let's just test this. Uh... Oh, so, go. the collective noun for giraffes. A tower or a journey. The collective noun for elephants. Oh, I don't know. What, what is it? I don't know. I was expecting you to tell me. <laughs> what is it? Absolutely, that's boring. There must be something else. What about zebras? zebras? Oh, a dazzle of zebras. A dazzle of zebras. Owls. A parliament. A parliament of owls. Okay, what about swans? A bevy or a ballet. A bevy or a ballet. Oh, frogs. Chorus. Um, hippopotamuses. A raft. A crash of rhinoceros, an implausibility of wildebeest. There you go. So this is what I was getting every five seconds. A goring of, of butchers, a greed of lawyers, a faculty of academics, a bench of magistrates. Once you start it, you can't stop it. A wiggery of barristers. <laughs> is that enough? Yeah. I love it. I want you to think about those collective words, those collective nouns that was to describe some of those animals. We heard a dazzle of zebras, a tower of giraffes, a cackle of hyenas, a chorus of frogs, a ballet of swans. Wow. Stunning words. And they all convey strength, beauty, they're just, they're, they're beautiful words. They speak of power. Our collective word is Bayside Church, and it too is powerful and stunning. And I want to give you some examples of this. Now, I could be wrong. I'm sure there's someone here in this congregation who would love to take on this challenge of producing 1,000 boxes with these beautiful items for children all on your own. Anyone up for that challenge? No. But as a collective, we do this every year through Operation Christmas Child. Stunning. Now, I'm sure there is someone in this place that would love to make 9,000 meals a year for the poor and disadvantaged in our community. Surely. Come on. Anyone? Not even one. But together, we do this through Matt's Place and Bayside Community Care. I love to think that I could raise $34,000 on my own, and hopefully one day I can, for the homeless in our city, particularly the youth. But a couple of weeks ago, we did that as a collective at Sleep at the G. And it was stunning. Now, it was interesting because one of the participants, his name is Glenford, Glenford at the moment is in the UK, but I remembered him telling me that he had done Sleep at the G in 2017 on his own. He had heard about it. You actually probably heard his testimony in the news. And he decided to basically go to Sleep at the G on the own, and, and he did it. But then we made it an initiative this year, and he said, well, I'm going to come in with my church. And so I was curious to find out what the difference was, and I messaged him, I said, Glenford, I know you're in the UK, but send me a video and just tell me what was the difference between doing it on your own and doing it as a church group. And we've got that video testimony now. Thank you, media team. Hi, Bayshiders. I did my first sleep at G last year. I did it by myself. I enjoyed the experience. You know, I was doing it for a good cause, and I was following my heart's desire. This year, I did the Sleep with the G with about 20 other Bayside's. It was a totally different experience. I was proud to be part of a church that was making an impact on the community. I felt empowered, I felt engaged, I felt excited. I made some wonderful connections on the night and some new friendships. And I'm looking forward to building on those relationships. So all in all, it was a wonderful experience. Let's do it again next year. I loved what Glenford said. He felt empowered, he felt engaged, he felt connected just because he chose to do it uh, as part of our team. And you know, the funny thing is, when he did it in 2017, he only raised around $800, he told me. This year, he raised $4,500. He was, yeah. 
There seems to be a multiplying effect when you join a group. There's a bit of camaraderie in the group, who could get more than the other. And somehow he managed to raise $4,500, which is outstanding. So Pastor Mark Connor, a couple of weeks ago, shared in his message, The Gift of Giving. He highlighted a very important fact that when we choose to do something for ourselves, the ongoing positive effect of that just lingers for a short time. But when we do something for others, the effect of that lingers far much longer. It improves our overall well-being by huge amounts. So we want to see the flow-on effect of that. And I can see it with Sleep of the G. Part of it is, you know, we formed this little messenger group um, so that we could find each other on the night, so we could locate each other. And this little messenger group is continuously, people are still messaging each other. We're giving each other updates on what's happening in the community. There has been this connectedness because we chose to do something together. And that's the flow-on effect when we choose to do it with other people. When we bring our giftings, our personality, just what we have, and contribute it to the collective, there's this outstanding thing that flows from it. I loved what Pastor Rob shared last week and um, regarding the Guilty documentary, and I'm going to repeat it this week because it bears repetition, and for anyone who wasn't here last week. The Guilty documentary focuses on the last 72 hours of Mahiran Sukumaran's life. And as you know, as a church community, we have journeyed um, with Maya Iran and Andrew Chan in, his, in their last uh, days and, and months leading up to their execution. But this was stunning. And the Guilty documentary is one of our initiatives this, this year, and we're going to be screening it uh, at Southland Shopping Centre on the 10th of October as part of uh, uh, the World Day Against Death Penalty. But I want, I want to read this out to you. Guilty will be screened all around Australia on the 10th of October as part of the World Day Against Death Penalty. Our national screenings on this day will send a message to the countries of the United Nations in the lead up to a resolution on a moratorium on the death penalty led by Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. The outcry of public opposition to the death penalty was stated loud and clear in the campaign to try and save Mayuran Sukumaran and Andrew Chan. At the time of this important work in the, in the United Nations, our campaign partners, listen up, Reprieve, Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, Bayside Church, Liberty Victoria, Human Rights Law Centre, DFAT, Good Pitch Funders and others are joining together to reiterate the Australian community's opposition to the death penalty. How stunning is that? I personally was involved quite heavily in, in campaigning for Andrew and Mayu's clemency and to see that they get a stay of um, execution, as many, many of you were. You were involved in the vigils here at Bayside Church and um, through Amnesty International in, in the city. Our pastors were very much involved right up until their execution. But it's not our individual names lit up in lights. It's our collective name, Bayside Church, that's lit up. And how stunning is that to have our church named up there? Yeah. We're not the largest church in Australia, but together we do amazing things. Bono has quoted Howard Zinn, and he's so right in this quote because it reflects what I'm talking about. It says, small acts, when multiplied by millions of people, can transform the world. Small acts of love, when we choose to commit to community, is how we change, it's how we make a difference, it's how we become more loving and whole. When we commit to each other in community, iron sharpens iron as one person sharpens another. I want you to think about what that actually sounds like, iron sharpening iron. It's not the most pleasant sound. <laughs> because the fact is, we are going to annoy each other. Most likely. Are we always going to get along? Probably not. Are we always going to agree? Definitely not. But if we commit to the power of community, we will grow in Christ's likeness. Absolutely, yes. So how, so how do we foster? How do we, how do we foster community? How do we do this thing? Well, 
It takes love, it takes time, it takes compassion, it takes care, it takes patience, it takes compromise, it takes work, it takes effort. It takes effort. And a lot of that sounds like the fruit of the Spirit. We can't actually evolve in the fruit of the Spirit unless we have others in our lives. It's very easy to just love myself. It's much harder to love you. (laughs) I'm being honest. And it's harder for you to love me. In many ways, it would be easier if, if, you know, we just do it alone. But the African proverb is right when it says, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. You know, working with others is a slower process. Growth happens slowly. But what you're able to accomplish together is far more incredible. I experienced this several years ago. Um, The Lord impressed on me, and I've shared this with you many times, in producing a course for single people in our church because I want single people to live God-given lives with purpose, not languishing. He laid that upon my heart, and the next thing he laid upon my heart was to find people to develop it with them. Now, to be honest, it would have been easier if I just did it on my own because it took us about a year to get this course together. We would meet uh, on a monthly basis, amazing people, Bev Simpson is one of them. And, uh, you know, as we were meeting, we were debating, we weren't always agreeing, no, no. I remember one point we were really stuck <laughs> at what we agreed, you know, what we thought. There was this teasing out, sometimes people couldn't make it. But we got through it and we got to know each other a little bit more. And because we went through that journey, I totally believe we had a richer, more deeper course as a result of it. There's a sense of shared purpose and a, share, and a sense of connectedness as a result of doing it. When we enable others to do this, it actually broadens the depth of what we're, what we're experiencing. And that's what happens in community. We grow richer, deeper and stronger. You know, fostering community, however, doesn't have to be hard. Sometimes all it requires is a bit of a mind shift of doing things differently. There's a family in our church who invited me to um, dinner several months ago, and they, they said, oh, we're going to have a pizza night, come round. And I was really excited. But then they told me, oh, bring your toppings. And I went, what? Okay, bring my toppings for a pizza night. Okay, fine. And when I got there, there was a whole group of people, and everyone had brought toppings. And the next thing I know, we're in the kitchen, everyone's making pizzas, everyone's using each other's toppings, and it was this absolutely fun, wild night. It was easy because everyone brought something. It didn't have to be hard. But as we're making and doing things together, we had these amazing conversations in the process. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 to 12, says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up, but pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm, but how can one person alone keep warm? And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Now, this passage of scripture is often talked about at marriages. But the original context of this this passage of scripture is actually alluding to a traveller, a pilgrim, who is on a journey and choosing to go with people rather than go it alone. And as travellers on on the journey called life, we can choose to either go it alone or we can travel together in community with others. And when we choose to travel together, we we sacrifice ourselves for the greater good of the community. And we all benefit as a result. We get a better return for our work. There is someone who can pick us up when we're having a down day. We don't become so easily overpowered when we're in community, which is much of what that Lunig cartoon was talking about. You know, I recently saw this as our church faced a major bereavement a couple of months ago. And I saw the power of not just our community, but many communities coming together to support this family through this bereavement time. There was the cricket community, the school community, the football community, our church community, everyone coming together to try and support and help. How much harder it would be for that family to do it on on their own. 
But because they're involved in communities, there was that power available to them. It's inspiring to watch Pastor Alice this year. Just, you know, I can't even imagine to lose a life partner after 60 plus years of being together. She's truly an inspiration. But I know Alice says it's because of the love of her family and the love of her family here of believers that has enabled her to get through that. We can get through major events in our life when we stick together as a community. You can't have community without commitment and without love. And you can't have love without commitment and community. That's how God designed it to be. And it's far more wild and adventurous when we go it together than going it alone. Can I invite you to stand? And I'm going to come down for this. I want us to all link arms or hold hands. And if you're sitting somewhere, maybe there's not a person near you, can you move to a position where there's not a single person not linking arms with somebody? And I'm going to come too, because I don't want to be on my own. No, 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 don't be on your own. Come on, dear. Come on, dear. And I'm going to pray for us. Beautiful. Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus came to show us. Emmanuel, God with us. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. I thank you for this community called Bayside Church that this is a community that's going to go from strength to strength and glory to glory. Lord, as we hold each other's arms right now, may we be so mindful of who we're traveling with. May we look out for each other. May our love grow as we rub up against each other. May we see you in the midst of us. May we grow ever more Christ-like and more loving. Lord God, so that the world may know that we are your disciples. Yes, Lord. Lord, we are dis- your disciples because we are committed to community in growing in faith and love with each other. Yes. So I thank you for that right now, Lord God. As we hold each other's hands, may there be a fresh impartation mm. to each one of us to be committed to this. Mm. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 amen.